Good morning, folks. Severe thunderstorms rolled through Sydney and knocked out power to about 6,000 residents. Similar storms are wrecking even worse havoc in Malaysia. In Maldives, 55 of the local islands have fresh water shortages that could turn serious very soon. In Central America, nearly a thousand people were stung in the past few days as jellyfish inundate the coastline. And in Brazil, torrential rains caused a landslide. This is the very first shot from Moss Fire, the new infrared scope at Keck. This is a North Korean launch site causing all the fuss. The launch is expected later this week. Just a reminder that you should be checking news from foreign sources, including Iran, China, and even Zionist sources. The information can be useful, and even if you hold some grudge against them, perhaps you might want to know what your enemy is saying. The last link in the box is a good source for locating gamma ray bursts. Play around with it a bit, see how it works. It's easy, fairly intuitive, and you can check out individual events. Geomagnetism is quiet right now, not much happening here or with the ionospheric absorption. All is normal. Even on the induction magnetometer, we only see minor PC1 pulsations and background variation. Ovation Prime shows a deficit of significant space weather as we await that CME impact. If you watch the solar wind data, it's fairly steady right now on the yellow and the orange. Any impact should be quite evident here. This is just a quick look at how active the sun was this weekend on Soho Lasco C3. Now activity has quieted a bit last night. And the only significant active region is turning a limb to the right there. We do have a couple of thin magnetic filaments wrapping around the sun which have been snapping off all weekend and pose a continued threat. And of course we have that dark coronal hole which is about to point this way. will strike us with a strong solar wind speed that will be ending around the time Saturn opposes the sun right behind us. I don't like looking too far ahead with this stuff, but May 6 presents significant positioning of the moon. At 3.34 on May 6, the moon makes its close approach to Earth for the year, indicated by the double plus sign. And only two minutes later, at 3.36, the full moon lines up with the Earth and Sun. That's quite the scenario, and just wait till you see what the beginning of June brings. A lot on the horizon, folks. Eyes open. That's the news. Be safe.